Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show a load of FL Studio tips and tricks and hidden features, some of which you've seen me use in my tutorials before, but I've never really talked about them or explained them fully. So let's dive right in. I've opened up FL Studio and the first tip is really straightforward. It's this double waveform in the playlist. So whether a sample is mono or stereo, you can display it with a double waveform, even though it's only one clip. I do this all the time in my videos. People always ask how to do it. Very straightforward. So on your waveform on the playlist, double left click, pulls open this wrapper setting. Then in the waveform down here, you have to right click, go to the bottom and select multi-channel waveform view. So I have it selected. If I left click, to deselect it, you'll see that we go back to this mono view. Just one more time to reactivate it, that's a double left click, right click in here, multi-channel waveform view. Now this guitar recording happens to be a mono recording, which means both the left and right channels are absolutely identical. If your left and right channels are the same, you hear it as though it's coming from directly in front of you. However, this technique will make more sense when I start panning things. So if I take the guitar and pan it to the right, click down here to record and press Alt and R, if I render this out, I've just skipped ahead, colored and named that. Now I'm going to do the same for the left, pan the guitar to the left, Alt and R. Now I hope you can see some of the benefit in this technique. So if you have stereo files or if you have panned files, that's, you know, left or right, hard panned drums, guitars, keys, synths, anything, and you're working in a big mix, it can be really beneficial to see on a playlist level where things are being panned so you know that you're affecting the right stems and chopping up the right stems. So if I just solo this guitar left here in green, and then the guitar right, it's really handy just being able to do that. And it goes without saying, I suppose, that the top waveform represents the left channel, so left headphone or ear, and the bottom waveform represents the right channel. So in large dense mixes, this can come in really handy and it doesn't just work on long wave files. You could go into the playlist and grab uh, a small sample like this, just a one shot clap and do exactly the same thing. Double left click, right click, multi-channel waveform view and you can see if there's any stereo difference between the files. I've got a couple of really good tricks for the mixer now. The first is just cloning an entire channel. So if you set up a specific processing chain the way you like it, say I've got this guitar and I wanna duplicate it for maybe another guitar bus, maybe that was the left guitar, I wanna clone it for the right guitar. To drag and drop this entire effects chain onto another mixer track, simply right click, go to file, then hover over save mixer track state as. But instead of clicking and releasing, just click and hold, and you'll see that it's sort of hovering around with you, this little nice little animation. Drag it onto a new empty track, so in this case 21 for me. Take just a second, and it will duplicate the entire track. So it's duplicated all the plugins, the level on the fader here, and it's also duplicated this track separator that I have here. Track separators are really handy, so if I right click, group separator down here, you can see that it just removed that gray bar at the side. I like using separators, it just helps separate my mixer out in my mind and on the playlist, helps me mix a little bit more fluidly. But often you don't want to clone an entire effects chain, maybe just one plugin. Say for instance I love this reverb setting that I had on the guitar and I want to apply it to a different instrument, I can just left click down this drop down arrow here, save preset as, click and hold, that's a left click and hold, and now I can just drag this onto any track I want. So let's just select the sub, and just like that, I've put reverb on a sub bass. While we're looking at the mixer, I always keep mine in this extra large mode. I think a lot of people know this. There's loads of different modes you can select here. A benefit of this mode is that you can see this expanded plugin list down the bottom. So if I'm on a different channel, say this sub channel, I can open my guitar's EQ by simply clicking on it here or I can open up the guitar's reverb. So you can open up those effects without having to navigate to the channel and opening them from the effects chain here. And you can also just close them by going back down to the bottom and turning them off like that. While we're talking about the mixer, I wanna talk about the metronome because when I turn it on, mine always outputs to track one. Whereas a lot of people, it just goes straight to the master. You can actually choose where you want the metronome to be output. All you've got to do is go to the menu at the top left of the software, go to options, audio settings, and then down here in the preview mixer track, this is the track that your metronome will be output to. So I typically keep it at one, it just keeps things clean, but you could theoretically send it anywhere. Something else to note is that the preview mixer track 
is where all the samples you select will be previewed. So you just have to be slightly careful because if you have any effects applied to this track, maybe to help with your metronome, like a delay, any sample you select will also be put through all of that processing as well. So just make sure that you keep this channel clean so that you can hear the samples exactly the way they are in your browser. This next technique is a really quick way to make pads or ambiences, textures out of stuff that's already in your projects. So what you need to do is get any kind of sound that's fairly rapid, fairly repetitive. Arps work really well, anything like this really. It doesn't have to be an actual arpeggio, it could just be one note quickly repeating. Anything in your project, what I'm gonna do quickly is just pitch this up. So I'm just gonna control A, control, up arrow, up arrow again, I'm just going to pitch it up a few octaves. Now I'm going to quickly record this track out by right clicking at the side here, consolidate this track from track start. That'll just record out whatever's on that particular track on the playlist. Great, so I have this waveform here. Now I'm going to double left click, go down to here, and I'm going to right click edit in audio editor. With this open in the Edison, now you need to expand your Edison from the bottom right because you might not have all the options here. So just expand your Edison until you can see this sort of teardrop, this uh, blur tool. So I'm going to left click on that and I'm just going to take the amount down to about four or 5,000 milliseconds. You'll see that in the top left hand corner of FL Studio, about four or 5,000 and I'm going to hit accept. And now what this has done is it sort of turned it into a pad and blurred everything together. Let's take a listen. So you can still hear the different melodic information in there. You can actually hear it hitting different notes. So you don't have to select uh, an arpeggio. It could just be one single repeating note or a chord, but this is a really nice way to create a really lush atmosphere. Try it with guitars, keys, try it with bright sounds, dark sounds. You get so many different textures out of this. Once you've got it onto your playlist, you can of course send it to a mixer track and then start uh, adding new effects, add different EQs to this, so you can of course cut the low end out, make it nice and bright and pretty. In this case I added a stereo imager. Now I've got a really good mastering tip, it's all to do with the file data or metadata of your export. So this is the mastering project for the song in our recent remix contest, While You Think It Over. If I just go up to the options here and I go to the project info down here, project, project info, it will open up. And if you give it a title and an author here, so while you think it over was the name of the song, the artist was closer. If you title it correctly here, it means that when you export your song and you open it in a media player, you can see that as the file plays, it says while you think it over by closer. And whatever media player you're in, whether you're in your car and this is on a CD or whether it's on your MP3 player or whatever, that title is going to come up instead of just some generic project name or project file. It's a really sort of clean professional touch you can add to your masters. It just makes it seem a little bit more pro. And just as a little bit of reassurance for those of you out there, you can see that in my mastering project, I had a ton of different renders, loads of different versions before we ended up with something we were perfectly happy with. This is totally normal. It's very rare that you nail something, get it perfect the first time and doing revisions and taking a couple of days and re-listening to your work. That's all part of the creative process. It's totally normal, totally natural. It takes time and that's all part of the process. This tip is all about saving CPU in your projects. So sometimes some projects here, you've got a lot of different virtual instruments running. A lot of these instruments are running inside Serum. In fact, all of them. So my mid bass, top bass, sub bass, chords, keys, everything seems to be running inside Serum in this particular case. And I'm using a lot of my presets from in the mix Serum Essentials. For those of you that don't know, Serum is an extremely powerful synth, which means it uses quite a bit of CPU resources. So to keep your projects running smooth, you could either print them to WAV files, but then you can't change anything later, or you can sample the entire Serum patch and create what's called a direct wave instrument. I have a quick tutorial linked in the description which goes through all of the steps. It's actually really straightforward. You basically select the patch in the channel rack, you right click and select create direct wave instrument. 
you choose a place to save it, and then FL Studio creates a direct wave instrument for you, so it samples every key in Serum, and then you can still play it, you can adjust your melodies and chords, but you're using samples, so it's running off your RAM, instead of taxing your CPU to generate all of these tones. I really do highly recommend that video I made, it's one that I'm very proud of, so if you want to know how to do that, save your CPU, but still stay creative with all of your melodies and chords, definitely go check out that video. And while we're talking about my older videos that I'm still proud of, there's one to do with removing noise. So if you have a noisy microphone or you've just got a noisy sample or recording, FL Studio has its own denoise tool built into the Edison. So I've got a very quick video that shows you how to denoise your own samples without losing any audio quality from the voice or the guitar or anything else like that. It's a really great video. Again, it's linked in the description in case you've got any time on your hands to go check that out. So that's all for today, but if you want to know more about any of the techniques, simply check those videos I linked in the description. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great week ahead of you, and I hope to see you in the next video too. Bye for now.